Hey everyone, Fintech here, and in this video, I'm going to go over my top eight stocks to buy right now. With the NASDAQ down nearly 30% year to date, these are the companies that I think have the greatest chance of returning a very positive return going forward. And I'm not gonna waste any of your time, so let's start by diving into my actual brokerage account and my actual stock portfolio. So on the screen here, we have my Charles Schwab account, which represents all the money I have invested outside of my retirement accounts. So we can see that over the past two years, it's been kind of a bumpy ride. That was pretty much straight up up all the way through 2021. In fact, we had a very positive year during 2021, but it basically peaked in November and it's been downhill from there. In fact, year to date, my portfolio is actually down nearly 50%. And the reason for that is because I invest in much more volatile tech companies, which tend to be hit harder when the market drops, but also tend to recover better when the market goes up. So with that said, let's just dive into my first stock position. So the first company that I'm gonna talk about is Datadog, which I currently own 401 shares of at a market value of just under $35,000. And that's off a cost basis of also about $35,000. So it's basically flat. And it has a D rating from Charles Schwab, but to be fair, these companies have all had D ratings the entire time I held them. And some of these companies had two or even three X returns, and yet Charles Schwab was rating them as a D or an F the entire time. So I wouldn't really put too much stock in those ratings. Now Datadog is exactly what it sounds like. It's a data company. They try to use unite a company's applications, their infrastructure, and their security all through a single pane of glass. This makes it easy to uncover hidden value within the company because maybe your security team has some kind of data which could inform your operations team and they don't know it unless that's brought into a single place. Now Datadog is growing extremely quickly. They grew their revenue by 80% over the past year. And I think that they're also more recession proof than a lot of high growth companies because the kind of services that they provide are going to be valuable to companies whether or not there's a recession. Plus, most of their customers are large enterprises who are going to be a little bit less fickle during an economic downturn than, say, an individual might. So my thought with this company is if the market recovers, it's going to go up because it's growing so rapidly. And if the market suffers, it's probably going to do better than a lot of other companies. Next up, we have Snowflake, which I currently have 160 shares of at a value of just under $19,000. And that's off a cost basis of nearly $30,000. So this one stock alone has lost nearly $10,000. And that's going to be a cost common theme here because these tech stocks have been hit so hard by the market recently. Now Snowflake, similar to Datadog, is a data company, but they work in a slightly different area. In the past, data used to be kept in handwritten notes and notebooks. Then it moved into simple spreadsheets on a computer. Then they started moving it into databases, then data warehouses, until eventually it all moved into the cloud. Snowflake represents another order of magnitude improvement in data, where they actually manage all the data for other companies in the cloud. So rather than a company going in and building all their own data, data infrastructure and hiring a bunch of expensive data engineers, they can outsource that to Snowflake to take care of it for them. Snowflake also has some really powerful features like the ability for companies to share their data on edges between different companies, which can potentially make their product extremely sticky. Because if your business is built on a certain data source that's only available on Snowflake, you don't really have a choice. You're pretty much locked into the ecosystem. Now, Snowflake has always been an extremely expensive and highly valued company since they IPO'd. And that's just because they are a really good company and the market realizes it. They're currently also growing their revenue by around 80% per year. But after the recent declines in their stock price, their price to sales ratio has dropped from well over 100 where it sat a few months ago to now sitting at around 24. This is the cheapest that I've ever seen Snowflake on sale and so I've taken advantage of it and that's why Snowflake is now my second largest position overall. Number three, we have Zscaler, which I have 112 shares of at a value of $15,800 and that's often initial investment of $27,500. So that's down around $11,500. Zscaler is a security company and they offer zero trust security. So in a traditional security model, you might build a firewall around your entire network, which keeps the bad guys out. The problem is if a bad guy somehow manages to find their way in, they now have access to your entire network. Zero trust security is the way that the entire industry is moving, where every single application, every single computer, every single person on the network has to authenticate before talking to anybody else. This is obviously extremely important, but it's becoming even more top of mind for companies as we see more and more data breaches every day. Zscaler is also growing its revenue 60% per year despite already being a fairly decent size. And so this company is clearly performing extremely well despite the fact that the market is discounting its stock price. Number four, we have Cloudflare, which was my third largest position last month. 
Cloudflare I have 317 shares of at a value of $13,000, and that's off an initial investment of just over $20,000. So it's down around $7,000. Now Cloudflare is a company that's trying to make the internet itself work better. They started out by just hosting websites on DNS servers, but then they started offering security solutions like firewalls as well. But then they realized if they're spending all this time trying to keep the bad guys out, maybe they should spend equal time trying to optimize the experience for good actors. Since then, they've launched product after product after product, and this may be the most innovative company in my portfolio. Five years ago, if you had told me that Cloudflare would be competing with companies like Amazon or Microsoft one day in terms of cloud computing, I would have told you you were crazy, but they've managed to do it. Cloudflare is also an extremely consistent grower. They've grown by around 50% per year like clockwork for big basically the last five years. Their CEO, Matthew Prince, also regularly writes blogs on their website, and he's a really good writer and communicator. So if you're interested in this company, I would highly recommend you look into them there. Next up, we have Zoom Info, which I currently have 194 shares of at a value of six and a half thousand dollars. And that's off an initial investment of around $12,000. So this is almost down 50%. Zoom Info, similar to some of the other companies, operates in the B2B space. So they sell to other businesses rather than to consumers, which should protect them somewhat in the case of an economic downturn. Some of the services that Zoom Info offers are sales OS, marketing OS, talent OS, operations OS. They basically try to handle a lot of the backend services that a company might need. I listened to a podcast with the CEO of Zoom Info and he talked about how they could actually record sales calls that agents were making to other people and then analyze those calls for patterns to try to optimize them to make the best sales pitch in each individual call. These kinds of value added services are why Zoom Info is growing so rapidly and why companies like Google, Zoom, Snowflake, and T-Mobile all use their services. Next up, we have Sentinel One, which I have 274 shares of at a value of $6,000, and that's off an initial investment of nearly $13,000. So this has lost over 50% of its value so far. Now, Sentinel One is another security company, but while Zscaler is more focused on authentication, Sentinel One is more like a super advanced antivirus. This company is currently the fastest growing company in my portfolio, up 120% year over year in terms of revenue. And the reason for that is obvious. They offer one of the best products in their entire space, and they're still small enough to have room to grow. If you followed this channel for a while, you'll remember I used to invest in a company called CrowdStrike, which looks very similar to Sentinel One, only they ended up tripling in value while I held them, and they simply got too big to keep growing at the rate they had been before. Sentinel One kind of looks like CrowdStrike did maybe three or four years ago. And if we look at Sentinel One's stock price, they are down around 70% from their all-time time high, and so I think that at this price, Sentinel One could be a good deal. Next up, we have Upstart, which I have 148 shares of at a value of $5,000, and this has been my worst performing position overall. It's down from $32,000 at the high, so it's lost $26,700. And the reason for that might not be what you would think. Upstart offers AI lending services. So while a traditional bank evaluates someone based on a single number, their FICO score, to determine whether or not they should give them a loan, Upstart looks at thousands of different data points and feeds them into an AI model, which constructs a model of what the person looks like and how risky they are to give a loan to. This lets Upstart offer loans to customers who traditionally wouldn't qualify, or offer better rates to well-qualified customers. The best part of Upstart is that they don't actually keep a large portion of the loans on their books. Instead, they sell them to other companies to actually service them. This means that Upstart isn't as exposed to credit risk as a lot of these other companies are, while still getting the advantage of getting all these loans on their books. Now, up until now, Upstart has been absolutely crushing the personal loans market, and they've also started to move into auto lending and then eventually home mortgages as well. Now, if they're as successful in auto lending as they were in personal loans, this company could two or three X in size extremely quickly. That being said, Upstart has been hit hard by macroeconomic conditions because they are in the lending space. And so if we look at their peak to trough back in October, they are down 91.77%, which is absolutely ridiculous for a stock. It almost looks like a crypto. I do fundamentally believe in Upstart in the long term. The only reason this is a smaller position for me is one, it's just decreased in value. And number two, those macroeconomic conditions could still continue to affect this stock for maybe a few years. So this could take a while before it recovers. That being said, I think when it does recover, it's going to do extremely well. And then last up, we have SoFi, which I have 171 shares of at a value of just under $1,000. And that's 
off an initial investment of $3,000. So this has lost around 66% of its overall value. SoFi is trying to become the go-to place for millennials to do banking. They have a sales funnel model where they try to capture new customers using their apps like SoFi Invest or SoFi Money, and then funnel those customers down to more valuable products like SoFi Lending. SoFi is essentially three businesses in one. There's financial services, which includes the SoFi app. There's the Galileo technology platform, which is a platform they're building to actually offer payment solutions to other companies. And then there's SoFi Lending, which is their bread and butter and how they actually got started as a company. Now, SoFi, similar to Upstart, is struggling because of the macroeconomic conditions right now. They do make the majority of their revenue from the lending segment, which means they are exposed to macroeconomic risks. That being said, I think that SoFi's long-term potential is really in their Galileo technology platform, where they can essentially become the technological backbone that runs all the banks of the future. Imagine not having to wait three to five business days to cash a check. Instead, if you use SoFi's network, you can just do it instantly, the same way you would with a crypto. SoFi is going to have the same problems as Upstart over the next several years until macroeconomic conditions clear up. But again, in the long term, maybe five to 10 years out, I think SoFi is going to become a household name. Now, lastly, I need to tell you about any trades that I made in the past month, and I only made one, and that was selling out of a company called C Limited. C Limited was a good, fast-growing company that was involved in three markets, kind of like SoFi. They had Garena, their gaming business, they had Shopee, which was their e-commerce business, and they had C Money. The problem was Shopee was hit really hard by all the supply chain issues over the past few years, and now C Money is getting hit by all the recession fears around the world. Unfortunately, this was a company that just had too many headwinds from the macroeconomic environment. And so even though they may be very successful over the long term, at least for a few years, I don't see them really recovering or getting back to the prices they used to have a couple years ago. Now, I know I'm going to get some comments saying that I should sell out of the market. Everything's going to crash tomorrow. And you know what? You might be right. But fundamentally, I don't know how to time the market as a whole. I just know how to recognize companies that are outperforming the market in general and yet are being valued as if they're underperforming. None of these businesses, except for Upstart and SoFi, have been negatively affected by the macroeconomic environment up until now, and yet many of them are down 50 or 60 or even 70% over the past year. It's one thing to have a slight pullback to correct valuations, but it's another to completely drop in value solely based on what the rest of the market is doing. It's almost like the market stopped caring about what are good and bad companies and simply sold everything. Now, if you're interested in investing and you're maybe looking for a new investing app to check out, try checking out Moomoo because they are currently giving you seven free stocks when you deposit $100 on their platform using the link in my description. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.